Uh, my name is uh, Melody. I uh, am Chinese. I grew up in Beijing. Uh, and I worked in Hong Kong, in Beijing, and now in Singapore. Um, I have been. Um, I started my career in banking, so in finance, uh, in financial industry, um, doing investment banking um, for four years in Goldman and then UBS. And I moved to uh, Beijing around 2009. That's when the startup scene really took off. Um, and at that time, my husband wanted to do a startup. So I was introduced into the, the venture capital uh, world by a guy called uh, Steve Bell. Um, the, the reason why I mentioned his name is that now we are working together again after 10 years on his amazing blockchain project called uh, Orchid Protocol. Um, that's why I mentioned his name. But so I started um, doing uh, venture capital investment. At that time, was, the market was really small in China, very at the very, at the very beginning. So we would go around China and uh, go to second tier, third tier cities, and as well as first tier cities, the best in engineer school to organize hackathons, to convince students to uh, quit their school and start a business, start a startup. Seriously? Yes, yes, and that was um, very inspiring. No, none of them did. <laughs> none of them did, but some of them did join startups and started their company instead of uh, joining a big company. So at least I felt, um, you know, I've done some yeah. something, right? And uh, that kind of, the reason why I'm mentioning this as well is a lot of the students that we've worked with at that, at that time are like senior VPs at uh, VCs. You know, they are like successful entrepreneurs. Some of them have made a lot of money and like really inspiring. So coming back to uh, Spartan, I guess I went a bit too far, but coming back to Spartan, it's what brought me into blockchain is also uh, meeting entrepreneurs. Um, so I met this guy. Um, his name is Toby, and he moved to Singapore at around the same time I did. He's, he wanted to do a blockchain, like a Bitcoin blockchain-based uh, remittance service. Um, and I just, hearing him talking about the Bitcoin community and how passionate he was, and it really touched me. So I followed his company for two years, and I ended up investing in them, participating in their ICO last year which was uh, the largest in Asia, raising $80 million. It's called a 10X. 10, oh, 10X, yeah. yes. Um, I'm still like, close to the founders, and I really appreciate them bringing me to this world, opening my eyes um, about this community. Um, and uh, since then, we worked on um, Gifto, um, app coins. I was mainly working on uh, very, very closely with Andy on Gifto, and it was my, I will have to say, my first end-to-end, um, -end, you know, from the start to now, still, um, he like heavily involved um, ICO. And um, Andy is like me, like we are not native um, blockchain people, like we came from other industry and startups and VCs, we came into this world and we, curious by it, intrigued, and loved the idea, and we wanted to find out what we can do. Um, and I felt, I really felt I found my voice, and I found my place, and I love serving clients, and I love seeing them succeed, just like I was as, you know, in a bank, you know, working for a more mature entrepreneur, doing IPOs, or as a VC, like investing and inspiring young entrepreneurs, right? It's a combination of two right now. It's a perfect place for me to be. So, how did Spartan Group start? You know, Spartan, why Spartan? Why Spartan? Um, the name, um, is the Spartans are what I believe the most fierce perseverance and they don't, they, they embody a certain spirit and, uh, and uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they were remembered by their braveness and then their, their teamwork, their, their loyalty. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to create a team that has that spirit. Um, I mean, it's really, really hard work to take people on the ICO process and on that road show. So this crypto world, we know that it doesn't sleep, it doesn't stop, and it's fast moving and the market is volatile. If you don't, if you can't have that spirit, you will not be able to pr provide that premium service we promised we would. Um, and we hold ourselves to the highest standard um, and I'm proud of that. So I want to create that culture, that 
you know, and the people who we have surrounded ourselves in Spartan are like that. So I think culture and value makes a team succeed. Um, and that's the most important thing. I want people to like hear it, they see it, they feel it, and our clients know what we stand for. So, so what does Spartan Group do? Right, because we are, um, we are a blockchain or ICO advisor and investment firm. Um, we have uh, two main lines of business, right? One is that ICO advisory. We were doing um, financial or investment banking or IP advisory before, so we know the process. We know how to provide that good um, service. Um, this includes, you know, um, helping with uh, reviewing the white papers and making sure the idea is clearly communicated, um, re reviewing their uh, the marketing or the roadshow materials, um, understanding their token structure, distribution, make sure it's um, favored by the community, not just something that they think of. Um, from that to the legal structuring, the tax analysis, like we work with the best law firms, the best, uh, best um, tax, tax advisors in the blockchain space um, on a global basis, because every single ICO is on a global basis, right? Um, we work very closely with them to come up with the optimal structure for a project, just to prepare them for that. That's the foundation level, right? And we go all the way to getting them the right investor, showing them how to pitch, um, really draw out the best out of the company and the entrepreneur. And uh, closing a negotiation with investors, designing the right lockups period, just make sure that their token is well um, distributed. Um, and uh, all the way to the end, I guess, and the PR marketing, all of that. Like you said, it's really hard to, I mean, it's, for me, it's not too hard to distinguish the really bad ones because they just have poor website, they don't have the right team. Normally, good projects always can attract the right investor, the right advisor, right? Sure. Um, so when I evaluate my client, for example, yes. that's um, the first time I would meet them, I would want them to like, tell me why they want to do a blockchain project and what they want us to help on. The really capable ones are passionate about their project and they want you to help on things that are critical for them, right? The really not sincere ones are like, well, you offer white paper writing, right? I'm like, no. <laughs> and uh, I've met a few of those. Like, I just kind of like, no, I'm not even returning your phone anymore. Like, it's just, you know, or some of them are like, oh, I want to raise $60 million. When you ask them, they couldn't justify. So I think, I think for me, like, I, I don't actually trade much. Uh, I don't have actually time to even invest in many. Um, but I only select the ICOs I really like, believe in, and also the founders, like the chemistry with the founders, whether they will listen to me, whether they will be my friend, because we become so close, like we talk like many, many hours a day, like we don't sleep, like we travel together. You're gonna have to love this founder, you know, one way or the other, to be able to help them to go through that intense period of time. So, so I'd say your selective process when keeping an ICO to work with is more organic. It's very, it's very, it is, yeah, because, I mean, we're in a lucky position that the market is so hot. We have the, we, we have the ability to choose, right? And I, first of all, like, look at all of them and see which ones are, we really like, and then, again, we choose um, the founders. We are a startup, so I have, what we have, uh, me and uh, two other partners, we have a, an idea, kind of an idea where we want to be. Um, we want to create this premium brand and uh, or premium standard for uh, the crypto financial service. We see that and we've done it in the real world. We haven't seen it in this crypto world. And as really good high quality projects and really high quality entrepreneurs moving into this space, they're gonna deserve, they're gonna want a lot better service. Right? They're used to top quality service. They're not gonna be put up with, um, you know, inexperienced and uh, immature 
uh, professionals, right? Well, they're not professionals. So um, that's we, we, we see that happened in the real world before, and we think it's going to happen uh, again in the blockchain world. I was very impressed. Like I said, um, we, uh, I mean, we came one o'clock sharp, you know, people really started to arrive on time and, you know, they, they're very serious and they really care about the project and I've, I can see they've done a lot of homework. You know, they take their laptop, they put it on the table, they take out their notebook, write with their pen, they use photos, take, they take photos with their phone and they, um, I, can, I can see them taking a lot of notes on the, on the PPT, apparently they've downloaded from before. I'm really touched and it's a six, seven hour event, you know, and a lot of them stayed until the end. Um, I was like, oh, I'm starving, I want to leave, and, uh, but they still stayed and they asked really good questions. I was really touched um, by that and it's an amazing community. Sure, yeah, so this time it's uh, six projects, um, two from San Fran, uh, one is Origin, Decentralized Marketplace, one is uh, Decentralized Influencer uh, Protocol. Um, really interesting um, blockchain story. Um, I think they're all taking on trillion dollar markets, um, disrupting the business on their with their own you know, experience and perseverance. And um, Gifto is my first and uh, most intense, of course, uh, and the uh, founder of Gifto is a good friend. So they were here um, supporting us and we're supporting them, like we've always been working together. And um, what else, um, the insurance protocol. Um, I actually didn't, have time to know that much about the company, but it was referred by a good friend and a very experienced investor. So I just knew it would be good. Um, interesting story, like this girl is, uh, has no insurance and, 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 and AI algorithm, you know, which she has built a company with that to apply insurance and now she's taking it under the blockchain with that natural quality of, of trust and of, um, um, of decentralization to like decentralized insurance uh, providers. Um, and on the movie chain, which has was 700 million users, um, user base to distribute like a movie for developing or, like really poor communities who couldn't afford the right internet or the fast enough internet and uh, highest quality phones, right? And making and making sure that money contribute back to the creator. So that was that was an amazing story. Um, and also Academy Token, um, it was an LA. It is an LA project. Uh, they are uh, opening up blockchain stores everywhere. So much needed. Uh -huh. And I told the project, I was like, this Robert's coming. He's joining us last minute. The reason why I have to have him here is you're gonna all have to be his best friend because he's gonna have the best uh, blockchain engineers and you have to take it all. <laughs> so yeah, so he's building a school. Um, the second school will be in Singapore. First one is already opened in Bulgaria. Um, Bolivia, Bolivia. Yeah, so second one will be in Singapore, 600 blockchain engineers. So I'm just, I just told Robert, is it okay if I just like work in your office? I just want to know them all. Um, Cause it's going to be amazing. I see your projects coming out of it or amazing talents, right? So the theme of the tour is called uh, tokenized. Um, the reason why I think we chose that theme and put together that group of uh, projects is we have seen 2017, a lot of infrastructure projects are coming out. Even still, like now, there are a lot of infrastructure projects coming out and they often are very sought after by normal investors because that's when it started and people felt like that's something going to capture most of the amount of value and they, the price goes up the most. Um, but I do believe that not all the infrastructure will um, sustain and they're incredibly difficult to implement. And uh, as soon as a better infrastructure comes with more money, the dApps, the protocol level, like servicing level platform, 
they can they don't have to be loyal right they can build on any of these blockchains right and you all have to pr provide the best technology to attract them we're a, we're a lot of funding we're, we're, we're users right um, but in the end just like any um, of these infrastructure projects eventually the competition we will will you will force the value being like leaving this protocol level uh, blockchains. So, and also I, I think it's natural that the dApps have the real relationship and value adding to the users and they will hold that. Like they will be much better at capturing um, value, building, um, you know, decentral, like we're exp experimenting, really trying to like uh, finding the right um, decentralized business to, dis to disrupt their own business. So I think these are all proven entrepreneurs and I think they have the best shot um, to make that experiment a success, at least go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, yeah, the dApps, I, you know, dApps have the most um, proven entrepreneurs. I think it, the biggest challenge is still um, talent and, and also focus um, to maintain that level of professionalism and quality of work. It's hard for us to scale because um, we are very human capital heavy, right? Like one good banker can take maybe maximum three projects and that's kind of what we're taking. We can only take three projects because um, I have a very high expectation of myself and they all have to be 100% or 120% happy for me to like say I've done a good job. So that's where I guess I'm a little bit stuck. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm hoping that more professional, like more young and hungry and driven, curious talents come into the space and interested in doing the hard work of providing service, not just being a crypto investor. Right. Um, and to see the joy um, that I see is getting really close up with the company and entrepreneurs and help them, you know, in all aspects of their business. Um, and yeah, and building that um, business and that service is much needed. It's too easy to make money right now. It's too hard to force people to do this kind of 